Hi and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this video we're going to be creating the list. So in the last one we created the functionality for a node uh, in creating the node class and in this video we're going to create the list. It has two main methods. The add to list method that is going to create a new node in the list and take a node as a parameter and the find method that is going to find the first node with a name that we give it as a parameter. So it's going to go through the list comparing the parameter to all the student names in each node and see if they match. The first thing we need to know, however, is the properties of the list. So, because every node points to the next node, then the first node doesn't have anything pointing to it because it doesn't have a previous node. This is why the list needs to have the head. The head is the first node of the list. Um, so we also need, and uh, this is going to be private, we also need getters and setters for the head. So the way we're going to do this is by going to the previous class. You can go there and check or just um, follow me here. And we're going to do the same thing as in the previous video. We're going to set the head. Head is going to be equal to the parameter and public node get head return head. So this is going to get the head. Remember that the node and the node here are the same thing. So the data type of the method, the value it's returning has to be the same value, the same list type as the value it's returning here. So head is a node, the method has to be a node as well. Okay, so add to list We have a new one method that we're going to add. And there are two different um, routes we can follow. One route is if the head is null. The other one is if the head is not null. So if the head is null, we're going to do something. And if not, we're going to do something else. So if the head is null, we just want to make the head equal to the new node. Because we don't have any nodes, so it's reasonable that the head, which is the first node, is now going to be the node we're adding, since it's going to be the only node. Like that. If the head is not null, then let's remind ourselves of what happened. The new node we're adding is going to point to the current head, and then the head is going to be the new node. This way we're essentially squeezing the new node in between the list and the head. just like so. And finally we have the find method here. It's in red because we're not yet returning anything. We don't have a return statement. So you can see this method must return a result of type node because we've told it we're going to return a node but we haven't yet written that we're returning anything. So this is why it's red. So what does the find method do? The find method is going to go through the list comparing each node's name with the string name that is the parameter. And if they match, we're going to return that node. If they don't, then we're just going to keep going. So the first thing we do is we create a new node, which we're going to call marker. And it's going to be equal to the head, which is the beginning of the list. If the marker is null at any point, it means we've gotten to the end of the list. For example, if the head is null, we're at the end of the list, but the list is empty. If the head is not null, but the following one is null, then the marker will be equal to the head, will do things, and then the marker will be null in the next iteration, so we will stop. So if the marker is not null, if the marker's name, which is going to be the, the student name of the node equals the parameter, then we return marker like that. So while the marker is not null, means we're still in the list, we're iterating through it. If the marker's name, which is the student name of the node, equals the parameter which we give here to the method, then we return this node. We return marker, which is the current node whose name matches the parameter. So we return this. 
so that we can then use it or print the details out or something. And then we need to increment the marker, as we have seen. The markers next is simply going to be the next node in the list. So we make marker equal to the following node after we've checked whether it equals or not. Remember that if we return marker, we are going to exit the method in here. We're never going to get here. So what happens if no node matches? If we go through all of them, nothing matches. What do we return? We return null because null in Java means nothing. So we haven't been able to find anything. We simply return null. So this is the find method and the add to list method. One last thing that I think would be interesting for our class is to have a constructor so that we can initialize the list already with a head. So this is how we would do it. Now, whenever we create a list, we're going to give it a node and this node is going to be the head. That way we don't have to call the set head method if we don't want to. If we don't want to change the head, we can simply initialize it like this. If we want to make the head equal to null in the beginning, we simply give it null and then head would be equal to null, which is the default anyway. Okay, so this has been the list class. Now in the very next video, we're going to be creating the controller class, which is going to join together the list and the node and get the user input and essentially create a program that will test everything out. So stick with me. Let's go into the next video and I'll see you there.